Hey there, Christopher Nossel here, one of the co-authors of Make It So. I'm trying a new format for the blog, one that's more fitting to the subject matter of the book, and that's video. So give it a watch, and if you like it, please forward it along to your friends and colleagues. For this first experimental installment of Sci-Fi University, we're studying constraints and affordances. And for that, we're traveling 250 years into the future world of the fifth element. So, spoiler alert, at the end of the movie, the heroes have to find a way to use four stones and four pillars and one pretty alien to fire a weapon against ultimate evil. And for their instructions, all they've got to go on is what Cornelius says to Corbin. The four stones should go around, the fifth element should be in the middle, and the weapon against evil should work. Now in the scene, Corbin first has to get the right stone in the right pillar. And he finds fairly quickly that to do this, all he has to do is match the pattern. Awesome. That's affordances. Donald Norman popularized the notion of affordances as a design concept in his book, The Design of Everyday Things. Here's how he described them. The term affordance refers to the perceived and actual properties of the designed thing, primarily those fundamental properties that determine just how the thing could possibly be used. A chair affords support and therefore affords sitting. And in fact, that's exactly what the Mondashawans did for the weapon. But wait, it gets better. There are three more subtle complications to getting the stones in position correctly. So the first is that the stones just can't sort of rest on their sides atop the pillars. They are meant to stand up. But how do we know this? Well, it's affordances. It's the affordance of the triangular divot in the pillar. Triangular divot plus triangular object is sort of the most basic affordances, relying on our sense of simple physics and maybe biology. Uh, but this kind of affordance is so obvious that there's no dialogue devoted to it, right? The camera shows it, the audience sees it, and the audience gets it. And that's a strong functioning affordance. The next complication is the stones have a correct rotation to aim them at the fifth element. How do we know this? It's kind of hard to see, but the stones aren't perfectly triangular on their ends. One long end is shaved so that it has a flat rather than a pointy edge. And the end shape is more like an extreme isosceles trapezoid. Now, if the recess in the pillar was perfectly triangular, um, then the shaved corner sort of wouldn't help. It could still fit in the wrong rotation. But if you look carefully, you can see that each recess has a corner clipped that faces the fifth element. So the stones won't fit in any but the correct rotation. And since this isn't super obvious, this design principle might be closer to a related concept, and that's the concept of constraints. Don Norman also talked about constraints in the design of everyday things, but not concisely enough for our purposes, so here's my crack at it. Constraints are the limitations of what can't be done with a thing. Designers use constraints to make it difficult, and sometimes impossible, to make mistakes. And that's exactly what this shaved edge does. Short of damaging the stone, it's impossible to get it situated in the wrong rotation. And that is constraints. The last problem is the stones actually do have a correct orientation, or right side up. We know this because later we see little drawers open up boop, in the top that release the triangular power cylinders within. Now it's possible that there are little drawers on both ends, so it wouldn't really matter which side is up. And in fact, when you're designing an object, it's best to make orientation a non-issue if possible, like a comb or a straw. Um, and that makes sense for industrial design when there's no cost difference. But in the case of technology, that can double costs and complicate even Mondashawan engineering. The bigger clue is that two of the stones, water and air, have identical patterns, horizontal wavy lines. And the air stone has these lines at the top, and the water stone has these at the bottom. Even with the stone upright and rotated correctly, it might be possible to have the air and water stones flipped, you know, and, and, and everyone would die. So how did the Mondashawans solve this? Well, they solved it by our old friend affordances. On the pillar where the pattern should be at the bottom, the pattern hugs against the divot. And when the stone is placed correctly, the pattern continues smoothly from the stone to the pedestal. In contrast, the pattern on the air stone is high up, with the bottom part blank. And on the air pedestal, the pattern is pushed out to the edge. To match that stone correctly, the blank part of the stone touches the blank part of the pillar. 
So this use of affordances and constraints are pretty subtle. But Luc Besson, the director, didn't make any fuss about this in the dialogue like he could have. Still, it's a bit of design brilliance in the middle of a brilliantly designed film. And note that between the number of stones, the number of pillars, uh, uprightness, rotation, and orientation to worry about, without affordances and constraints, there's a whopping 1 in 24 factorial chance of getting it right on the first try. So, do yourselves a favor and get to know these powerful design tools. Uh, put them to use in your designs and, you know, you might just save the world. For more interaction design lessons from sci-fi, be sure to check out the book I co-author that's chock full of such lessons. Make it so on sale at rosenfeldmedia.com and amazon.com.